in your journey at Tata Sons and the companies that you've run, how have you looked at execution? And we would love to hear the stories from the Tata Group uh, and no better than you, you know, to take the leadership team and inspire them on the aspect of execution. Sure, Radhipesh, and we're very, very happy to speak about execution. To tell you the truth, during my 36 years with the Tata Group, one of the things that has always kept me awake at night is the need to execute well. And, uh, you know, strategy contributes to success, but I have learned over my years that execution is essential to success. Excel excellent execution. So very happy to talk through the topic. Thank you. So let's begin with your uh, early engagement at a leadership level. You're known to be a marketing genius. Now we get into the world of execution. Take an example of a company where uh, you had the right strategy in place and then came that element of execution. What, what we keep doing is that we do a lot of analysis. There's a lot of data that we gather and then we get choices out of the analysis that this is what we could do. These are the options that we have. At times, if it's if it is path changing, we call that as a strategy. So there's a lot of analysis that happens. We get options. And then is the implementation of those choices that we have. And at times I've found that uh, not in this case, but then the say do ratio in terms of the implementation is where the yeah. penny drops. So let, let me give you an example, Dipesh. Uh, you know, many, many years ago, more than two decades ago, I used to be the retailing and marketing head of Tanishk, a jewellery business. The jewellery business at that time was going through some difficult times. We were making losses and we were not yet sure that the business is going to be successful. Eventually, I think led by people like Mr. Zerxis Desai and Jacob Kurian and Pascal Bhatt, the strategic elements of the business came together that we should be a brand of choice for the young modern woman that we should have jewelry which is very traditional in its ethos but still very contemporary in its look and feel that we should have very good customer experience in our stores uh, that we should have everything that other jewelers have including for instance gold exchange so all those elements of strategy came together very well however what we learned is when you have hundreds of stores across the country. What really works is perfection in execution. And I still remember going back to those days, one of the things we used to wake up to every morning were the regional sales figures of the previous day. This was well before the internet and digital became popular. So we used to get our sales figures by SMS early in the morning. And when we got those sales figures early in the morning by six o'clock, because the day, end of day download would have happened the previous day, one of the first things we would do is then create the priorities for the next day. And the priorities for the next weekend, because weekends are normally large for jewelry shop. And we would list four or five key priorities that we had to do during that day. It could be, you know, the Eastern region is lagging behind, maybe in Kolkata and uh, maybe in Patna. And what exactly can we do over the next two or three days to make sure that we catch up with the targets that we have to do? Uh, so I think that was one thing that I remember. But more importantly, what we also found is that about 40 to 50 percent of jewelry sales in a year happen from, say, August to November between Independence Day and Diwali. So That's we true. actually had a program put in place saying from Independence Day to Diwali. And we wow. used to list about 60 to 70 key actions that each of our teams, whether it's the design team or the merchandising team or the sales team or the retailing team or the marketing team had to take. And those 60 or 70 actions then became our binding. And it was our absolute objective that we will, on all those 60 or 70 actions, score 100 or 100. And if we did that, then Dhanteras and Diwali and the entire festive season for Tanishka would happen wonderfully well. So we track those and we track those, I think, on a weekly basis uh, with a lot of passion and a lot of rigor. Not so much, you know, achieving targets was important, but I think all of us working in that team at that time, we were a very small team. We wanted to show ourselves that we were capable uh, of achieving the best in the world. Yes. Those are two examples that come to mind. And, and of course, Tanish turned around. 
on the back of good strategy and good execution. And today it's a very, very prosperous business. It's the largest uh, uh, jewelry business in the country. Fantastic. Harish, uh, lots of what you said uh, deeply resonates. The daily evening data set that would come and the SMS in the morning that you would get uh, translates into something what we call as daily work. Okay. And coming up with a standard format on the daily work so that it's repeatable. Uh, and then having those action items listed down. Uh, following through those action items uh, on say for example the weekends being the event in that business uh, here what we have now done and I would always love to seek your guidance and advice is that we have a rhythm that every Monday we go business by business as to what did we uh, commit last week versus what have we done this week and the whole idea is that have you won the day to begin with the action items that you discussed and what the teams have have they won the day so that the business wins the day and then have you won the week yeah. and if this happens it should mean that did you meet the targets that you had set completely agree with the fact that numbers aside I think the cultural coming together of the team and the enthusiasm with, with which you go about doing business I think that stands paramount 